So far, I have made 10 F1 cars spanning through the years into the 70s, and that was a gold rush of innovations. Surprisingly, however, downforce wasn't utilized very much. I just would have added loads of wings, and I would have lost. Big wings equal big drag. And there's nothing more of a drag than drag. As a result, they would run such little rear downforce that they wouldn't often need front wings at all. Remember the Tyrell? That wasn't a front wing. That was just an aero device to move air over the tires. In fact, the forefront tires weren't even for traction. Uh -huh. I thought more traction equal good. And since wind tunnels were getting utilized more, Colin Chapman and a few others at Lotus tested out the Bernoulli Principle, and thus, the Lotus 78. Incredibly fast and incredibly unreliable? Oh, right. Um, they got the aero balance incorrect, which meant that they needed to run a very strong rear wing, and that meant more drag. And that meant they needed more power. And they made the ubiquitously reliable DFV Ford engine that they were using that everyone else was using a pile of hot garbage. Though with nine pole positions, 11 podiums, and seven of those being wins, racing had changed. Now, I wanted to make a replica of this. So here's how I did it. I took the base cube, I put that there, I put that there, I put that there, and that there. Then I went in and used subdivision surface. And voila, the Lotus 78. No. No. Remember those big air boxes that got banned in F1? Lotus was not deterred. Oh, I wish they had been. This is the most random collection of shapes, like this part up here, oh my god. What? <laughs> Why did they do this to me? This was really hard to get just ever so slightly right. Though, you know, still not 100% perfect. But I eventually got it done. I sent it through the automation SDK, and here we have it in automation. This has been quite the journey getting to this one. This one took a lot longer to design than um, pretty much every other one. Sure, I had to learn a lot with the Blue Wonder and that took a lot of time, but this one, just pure designing, took the longest so far. Here, Wikipedia says that the bodywork is made of fiberglass and used aluminium paneling, and up here it says that it uses an aluminium monocoque. If we do that, however, we're not going to be able to get the weight low enough because automation always makes these particular cars, unfortunately, way too heavy. Let me show you. Fiberglass paneling. We don't even have aluminium as an option yet, so let's make this newer until we find aluminium. There we go, blued aluminium. And we'll find out the rest in a bit. We have a mid longitudinal, double wishbone, and double wishbone, you know, much like a lot of these cars would have been. Then we're gonna clone a variant of the DFV. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna clone this one. And this one is gonna be for the Lotus 78. And this now needs 19 more kilowatts. Sounds easy, right? Lotus proved that actually it is really not easy. But we're in automation where naturally aspirated engines are way too overpowered, so all we need to do is just fiddle with a few little things. And there we go. Done. After like a minute of fettling, and we got a very close newton meter rating as well. Paint job stays exactly the same. And for this one, there's not actually a whole lot to be done here. We got this, which you can move around a little bit if you want. This, if you want to be able to cover up a slightly larger engine. And this, if you want to change your wheelbase at all for whatever reason. I, however, have this set perfectly at the moment, so we're going to reset that. In here, we're also going to hide the chassis entirely. Rear wheel drive, manual gearbox, five speed. It's unclear, so we'll go automatic locker, some cross ply tires still, and then semi slicks. Tire sizes are something I'm unsure about, though. Like always, there's next to no information on tires, but we'll make them magnesium and I suppose we'll measure them. So that looks to be about 380 millimeters, which is about 15 inches. That's easy to do. And the rear seem to be exactly the same. Then from the top, the tread section is about 220s on the front. So that we can do. We just have to now go in and start changing the size of these till we can get 
220. Then the rears seem to be 390s. For now, we just have to take their word on that because already this image has already proven to be not the most accurate in other regards. But either way, let's make this rear tire bigger so we can fit wider tires on. And there you go, 390s. And it ends up looking like something out of Wacky Races. Now brakes, vented on the front and vented on the rear. And now we have all of these options. So we're gonna go race diffuser and turn brake airflow up a lot because my God, you don't want your brakes cooking on a car like this. Probably still no power steering, no OBS yet, no safety to get that weight as low as possible. Even though this slider doesn't actually do anything, we're gonna tell it to go lighter just to make sure that you know that I'm being serious. We'll even turn this down, which doesn't actually affect anything, but that will make us lighter. Then standard spring, gas monotube, passive, and we'll set that to race. Now everything is quality spammed and our weight is 774 kilograms. And here Wikipedia says it needs to be 588. And we all know how Lotus feels about heavy vehicles. So this is a no-go. So yes, we're going back to here and we're gonna select carbon fiber and carbon fiber. And look at that, now we're only a little bit overweight. Yay! But that's fine, we'll run with it. What is this telling me? Severe issues with wheel spin. Um, I'm sorry game, there's not actually a whole lot I can do here. 23%, oh god damn. So instead I'm just going to turn that off. Oh thank god, we could put wings on to lengthen that out. Oh, there we go. All right, problem solved. 2.5 seconds to 100, oh, okay, well we're up 2.6. Still damn, man, that's fast. Now here's the next thing. When making mods, you used to be able to put in how much lift a car would make and how much drag it had. This, however, is hit the minimum amount of drag, so it can't have less drag than that, whatever, I don't care. But they said that all of this is now calculated off of the body to give a very accurate representation of what the car would be. Now this thing has a goddamn wing all the way through, like, the side pods of the car. This thing should be generating lots of downforce as is. But when I turn the aerodynamics quality all the way up, it's only generating 20 kilograms at like high speeds. So we're going to have to put some fake wings in. So before we go too far, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stick some in. We're gonna use just the MDW straight elements and just stick something in there. And then we stretch it out. Honestly, with these mod wings, I probably didn't need to have these side pods on here at all and instead just use the wings that are available. And now automation set it creates with maximum rear angle and front angle only about 200 kilograms as for downforce numbers we've seen numbers as low as 500 kilograms here this is about 1.5 tons and here this is about two tons why is there so much misinformation on the internet but this you may have noticed is for the Lotus 79 not the Lotus 78 but we have a very reliable sort of number where most agree that it's about 30% more than the Lotus 78 so we're gonna be aiming for about like 1 to 1.5 tons. Currently we're at about 300 and we're already bottoming out. That's fine, we'll deal with downforce first. So let's just start by doubling this thing. Now we have two wings in here. Now we have four, five, about 600 kilograms. Need to about double that. But first we're gonna do the rear wing and that looks pretty fat. So maybe now we should change the tires. Tire diameter is around 650-ish. Grab our one meter ruler. Move that to the center bit of the wheel and now we're gonna try to get this tire size down to half of 650 which is about 325 tire diameter please and down we go and there's about 320 to 325 good good numbers now let's do the same to the front and for the fronts we need about 510 which comes out to about 255 front tire diameter down perfect get rid of you and delete you now, the reason why we're making the wheels bigger and then shrinking the tires down as opposed to playing with the width instead, go watch this video. It'll just answer everything. And for the cherry on top, I've got globally stored a tire material. Apply done. While some here, I may as well also go over our paint options. And I have spent a lot of time on this one. Like a lot, a lot of time. Like a lot, a lot. I think I went back and redid like a lot of the bodywork like five times just to get this right. So we got the primary color, which for this one is just basically a black paint. Nothing too shabby. And you can already see, yes, we have lines. And these lines follow the body quite accurately as well. The only thing that's not entirely accurate is this line that goes along the top. And 
I almost want to get rid of the line along the top because it doesn't quite match. But that's fine. I'm going to make that the notorious gold color. Though here it looks a little bit more yellowy than anything else. And here you can see how bumpy and cruddy the paint is. So maybe we'll change the paint to be a cruddier paint too. So let's go back into this paint. I'm going to switch it to plastic so we can get bumpiness. Turn the bumpiness up. Perfect. And then turn roughness down until it's back to a nice sheen paint color. Perfect. To Mundo. Maybe we'll turn the bumpy just down just a little bit. Then here, you got ourselves the regular old vents. Make those the one you want. Change the size of it if you want to. I think about there is good. Then we've got ourselves a cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just gonna make that, you know, we'll just give it a tire color. It doesn't really particularly matter. This back here, on the other hand, is made usually of some sort of metal. So we're gonna go in for the trim and we'll just give it some sort of aluminium for now. And there you have it. The Lotus 78 paint scheme. All right, let's go and try adding this wing again. Make it narrow so it fits within the width of the tires and then make it fat. If you go by this, it looks to be about the same height as the AirPod and it comes down just in line kind of with the wheel rim. Okay, let's try doing that then. Line it up with the rim, line it up about the height, then a handy dandy wing end plate mod. It got kind of a rectangle with a corner cut off. Hmm, there's nothing exactly, but this is pretty darn close. Slop you into place, and now we're generating about four five, six, seven, about 800 kilograms. In other words, still quite a ways away. So let's go ahead and make another one of these. And aerodynamics say, we're basically a ton. Finally, how strong does our suspension need to be for this to not bottom out? Springs up a lot, please. Let's just max it out for now. And even at max spring, it says we're still bottoming out, unfortunately. Bugger. And I wanted to lower this thing even more. And that's why I would have lost. Let's go ahead and try to reduce oversteer by reducing our front gamber and then stiffening our sway bars. Since these things tend to understeer and I am going to go into the JBM and move the engine forwards, I actually am happy with this steering graph. I believe we won't oversteer. Great, let's move on to what sort of wheels we should have. And here I'm seeing a six spoke wheel with a center log nut and a big rim. Doubt we're gonna find that exactly. We may in fact have to go with a five spoke, I think. This is so far the closest I've found. Now, it's not a center lug nut, but you know, it's possible. It does everything else it needs to do. So very shiny chrome on the outside and a faint gold on the inside, a little bit more yellowy gold than this. That's fine. What's not fine is the fact that I can only paint basically the entire wheel. God damn it, we were so close. The next closest was this one. Unfortunately, it was a five spoke, but ugh, what you gonna do? And it also only lets you basically paint the entire wheel. God damn it, why? Back to default five spoke wheel. Fine, whatever. Ugh, God, this one as well is messed up with its color choices. What? What is going on? I swear the world is against me. Done. Sweet. Cool. Let's head on that skirt. We have a look. The skirt starts at about here and ends at about uh, in line with the mirror. So that's fine. Originally, this was meant to be like a uh, brush skirt to reduce the amount of air going through. Unfortunately, that would be too much to render. So we're just going to go with like the later version, which is rubber. And for that, we got a little thing in here somewhere. Ah, there we go. This thing in me diggy. I don't think I've ever looked at this and thought, you know what? I have the perfect use for that. Until today. Stretch it out, tuck it under, and paint it. Perfect Amanda. And here's a little trick I learned. Grab the vent that we want, and we're gonna stick it in around there. But that's not the right angle for this vent. If we have a look here, this is on quite the rake, is it not? But we don't have that rake on this vent. I could cut this out and do it myself, or I could do this. We're gonna make it narrow and 3D, rotate, and then hit 2D again. Look at that! Magic! But you're gonna have to move it back to 3D every single time that you wanna do any sort of editing to this. Right, now that that's done, let's move on to the hidden little vent that's hidden right in here. And we're gonna do much the same. Hide the wheel, hide the suspension. We're gonna turn the suspension off anyway. And then we're gonna do the same sort of thing. Grab a vent and stick this right in the middle, which I don't know why it's there, but ugh. Then we got these vents about here. Oh dear God, no. Whoops. And before you know it, with a lot of fiddling, you've got to do just how you want it. And here's a weird thing you probably never recognized about this car. The fuel cap 
is on the wing pod. So luckily we got these mods back and we will just give them the correct paint color. Now we're gonna put in this hoop bar and headrest. Gonna tuck that right in here. Grab ourselves some piping. And before you know it, that's done too. Next, a nice comfy looking headrest. And much like everything else by Lotus that wasn't uh, integral to lightness or speed, it's just kind of an afterthought. In fact, even speed was an afterthought as the engine itself just didn't work. Dunskies. Now, a lot of these, but not all of them, had this little bit of an extra roll bar right here. I think that's to get a little bit of extra height. So let's do that. And then, is that it? Not seeing anything else. Oh, I suppose there's a front wing too. That's gonna mess with my aerodynamics. That looks to be about the right sort of size, just inside the wheels and most of the front length. You know, we should probably move the engine forward before not too long. So move it forwards. If you're wondering why I'm not using this slider, it's because it's still doesn't work! Actually, works in game, but not over in Beam and Jig. Get it almost touching, and that's about right. And look at those trumpets tucked right into that. Love it. Well, we finally got it over to BeamNG and I have done a lot of work to this already. I, I skipped basically everything. I didn't end up painting the livery in Blender like I said I was going to. I ended up just making it out of parts because UV mesh unwrapping is kind of broken out of automation. And we've got it here at Monaco because we're going to jump right in and do a hot lap. I'm already in my race seat and everything. See? No, no, down, down here. I'm, I'm here. I swear I'm not a dog. So we've got all our stuff set up, we're gonna go start hot lapping, toggle details, and we're going to give it a go. Now, to make this thing more accurate to its real-life counterpart, I did a little bit of tweaking. You know, maybe not the best sort of tweaking, but something that really makes it accurate, and it's gonna work right away. Look at the bottom left of the screen! <gasps> And he's, there we go. Yeah, I made the engine less strong. And oh, oh dear God. <laughs> oh, shoot. Yikes. Yeah, we'll just ignore that one. And we might also ignore this part of the track where nobody has ever had an issue with a classic race car going around in modern Monaco. Eventually, though, I did end up putting down a very clean, well, not clean, but a lap where I didn't crash, because you're going to notice that I miss a lot of points here. I've got the turn-in points rather right, but the exit was terrible. This car has so much better grip. Now, watch through here, I usually snake becomes a problem. Usually here, you can't break over this ridge, because cars with low downforce there will get really unsettled. I get it offline, that's fine. This car just has the grip to bring me back to where I need to be. Had to lift a little bit, though, because it was going down a ridge, and I just maybe unsettle the car somehow. Here is also a little bit messy. I didn't know exactly which gear to be in. I did end up going down to first gear, which was kind of the right choice, but I wasn't carrying enough speed after the gear change. And here, this is also not quite perfect to get onto the back straight. Could have carried a heck of a lot more speed. Here, finally, we can go full speed, though. Oh, it's glorious. And then here, you have to brake before you start going over the ridge, otherwise you spin around. But in this car, you have so much downforce it is absolutely fine you can be way beyond normal braking points and there is no wonder this car was immediately even though this wasn't perfect seconds ahead of any other car it was just out there so the next version that came along added an extra 30 percent but it already had to start competing with other car companies that were already doing uh, a better job than Lotus. Lotus wasn't, um, let's say, great at their job. They were just really innovative on their ideas. Jesus, that lap time. That is crazy. 144? My God. That is three seconds faster than the Ferrari 312T. And I believe, on all honesty, look at my face. In all honesty, I believe I could probably go a good four to five seconds faster. Yep. The only thing really holding me back is kind of experience. This car is a whole different kettle of fish compared to the other cars. The other ones, yeah, had to be very safe and very soft over ridges, breaking into places, and then going around to reasonable speeds. And the jitter in this body is naturally right off the bat considerably less. So it didn't actually take a whole lot of work, though I did actually clean up the collision mesh to be 
a lot cleaner than what it really needed to be. It was already very clean. I just, I want to do more driving with this. So much more. You know what? I'm going to do the automation test track. Now I've brought it here for a very specific reason. The big weakness of this thing is it did have a lot more drag than the other cars. Now yes, underbody ground effect actually creates less drag, but they ended up having to add a whole lot of downforce anyway. And that meant that this thing was horrific for drag. And this track has what like one major straight, this straight, and another mini straight. So I feel that this is probably a pretty good litmus test for how this thing really is. And this guy is the guy to do it. Ignore that. I finally did put down a lap, but only it took like three attempts and then I smartened up and just decided, you know what, maybe I'll just drive a little bit slower. But this car is so tempting and I was still able to push quite hard. I did have to lift a little bit. This thing tended to have a little bit of understeer at about 100-ish kilometers an hour. Maybe what I could have done was put on wider front tires and less front downforce, which would give me more grip at the lower to mid speeds. And then the higher speeds, I wouldn't have the twitchy kind of oversteer I would get. Now, this car is so brutal, so much fun. I do suggest trying it out. It will be in the Beam and G repository. And if you have actually liked the video so far, please go ahead and tap that like button and maybe also tap that subscribe button, uh, but only tap the subscribe button if you're not subscribed. If you do that while you're already subscribed, that would be bad, don't do that. Anyway, you saw I went through the slingshot of full speed, coming down here to Bavarian Bend, really, really chattery under brakes, but that's fine. I was still able to carry quite a bit of speed through there. And here's the mini back straight. Now, the top speed of this car is not particularly high, but its ability to get to that top speed and the ability to slow down at the end of it, really quite nice. So I did accidentally scrub off maybe a smidge too much speed and then struggle to get out of the corner. So I am apparently a big fat liar. But here we go, Adam's Apex. Anything over 60 kilometers an hour around that corner, pretty good. Except for the fact that I ended up entering the corner a little too early, meaning the exit was a little bit stunted. The exit of a corner is probably the most important part of every corner. Entry, all of that sort of stuff is whatever, but the exit is the absolute most important thing that you must have right. And if you get it wrong, you suck as much as I do. That is not a bad time. Honestly, first time round, kind of, <laughs> this is uh, doing pretty well. I suppose really the only other place to take it is to Phil Hill, but I don't know if this is a Phil Hill sort of vehicle. The one place I do maybe want to take it to is not the Nürburgring because this would have never raced on the Nürburgring because that was cancelled when uh, Lauda had his crash. No, 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 that's Leclerc. No, this one was Lauda. Actually, that one was an actor. Stop hassling me. Instead, I'm bringing it here to West Coast USA for probably my favorite track in the base game. Aside from automation test track, this one is really up there. Oh, got to get in camera close and away we go. Okay, well, I needed that wheel. Goodbye. I will miss you. Whoops. Oh God. Oh god. Don't worry, I'm okay. Wouldn't you know it, eventually I was able to do a good lap. Perseverance over just the sheer lack of skill. Now the first corner was always tricky because it would always shudder under braking there. Then this next corner, at the end of this, it would always get really tricky. So I lifted quite a bit there and took this corner very gingerly because that was always a problem. This, no problem whatsoever. You just brake, turn in, car goes where you want it to go. You probably could have gone a little bit faster there. Then it loves very slow corners like this. It just turns in, it goes, and you don't realize, but you can always go faster. So then when you floor it, you're absolutely fine. Then going through here, I did stuff this up a little bit on entry as yeah, you can see that I turned in too early. I had to lift, but still I was carrying about 170 kilometers an hour through there. Not a slouch by any means. And down the back straight, we hit our top speed, which is pathetically low at about 250-ish, 200 and almost 60 kilometers an hour if you're going in a straight line. Then braking points. I braked a little bit early, but I wanted to, you know, finish recording this video sometime today. But we came out of there, 
there, we did fine. Going through here was where I had that other crash and ended up on my roof. Brakes are jittery. Coming through here, we're gonna reach the fake, uh, what's this? The, like, fake corkscrew sort of thing, me jiggy. Love this corner section. It is always such a thrill to go down there, and especially if you get, like, uh, the corner done quite nicely. It really feels good to hook up. Then the final chicane, and I've had to talk really fast, otherwise you miss everything because this car moves so goddamn fast. Engine damage a little bit more, but then we're done. Finished. Boy, that was a fast one. And let me guess, BMG, yep, BMG does not tell me what any of these cars are. Thanks, devs. Well done. Good job. At least we have mattresses and refrigerators. <sighs> Now that, my friends, is the end of this video, and I just want to go over one last little point. You hear a lot of people say that in the 80s, ground effect was banned. Well, no. There's been cars with diffusers the whole entire time, and that is ground effect. What in fact they actually banned in the 80s was actually really complex underbodies. They still allowed the sort of Venturi tunnel that is uh, Benuli's principal sort of thingy jiggy bobby do me do speak words and very smart me crunk. Anyway, before I sound too stupid, I'm just gonna go say goodbye to everybody. This has been great. Thank you for all of the subscribers. Oh my God. We hit 3000 subscribers, like over two, th 400 subscribers have come over from Car Mighty. So I hope for you, you've all enjoyed this video. But for now, I am done and spent. So I will catch you next time. Mm, goodbye.